Hello everyone, so we have some updates here on Ukraine's storm shadow strike on Russia's Black Sea Fleet headquarters. First up, we have a video playing now showing storm shadow hitting the HQ. And I will play it again slowed down so you can see it. And also, I'll play it one more time without me talking so you can hear the sound of it. Here's a screenshot so you can see there are two smoke plumes, so this suggests that three storm shadows were used to hit the building, two that hit it previously and the one we saw in the video. But this could just be smoke from the fire pouring out of different points of the building. It is hard to tell. Now, this before and after was shared by Brady Affic on Twitter, so you can see a big hole in the roof of a building and smoke coming out of multiple parts. So that shows there is a pretty intense fire going on inside. Only one impact zone is shown here, but some of the building is obscured by smoke. OSINT Technical shared this image. He does a much better job than I ever would at analysing the satellite imagery. So let's take a look at his analysis. It's pretty good. Starting at the top left, there's material ejected from the impact. On that image, OSINT Technical has highlighted the angle of the storm shadow strike. The one we just looked at that was recorded. So it hit the front or northeast corner of the building. Moving clockwise, multiple floors at the front were filmed burning. Next, the burning east wing is highlighted. So, unless this is just from a fire that spread throughout the building, this does suggest that three storm shadows were used here. At the very bottom, five fire engines are highlighted on the scene. And the image above that, we can see the visible hole in the roof, the Ukrainian coloured line indicating the impact route of the recorded storm shadow missile again. So, pretty interesting. Despite there only being one hole visible, it's caused a lot of damage to this building given the fires we can see burning inside, and there will be other damage and holes hidden by the smoke. So this headquarters is pretty much finished. Now, casualties. Ukraine's chief of the Ministry of Defence Kirill Budinov has confirmed the following. Colonel General Alexander Romanchuk, shown here, was severely wounded in the attack. He is the deputy commander of the Southern Military District. This is a pretty big scalp. He, along with Sergei Hozolev and Valery Gerasimov, is responsible for Russian defences during the 2023 Ukrainian counteroffensive, which as much as we all like to mock Russia's incompetence, have done a pretty good job in slowing Ukraine's advance with a combination of minefields, defensive lines, artillery and air support from Car 52s. So it does sound like he is actually a capable commander here. Also confirmed as seriously injured is Lieutenant General Oleg Tezogov. He was the commander of the 200th Separate Guards Motor Rifle Brigade. These are part of the coastal troops of the Northern Fleet redeployed to the Ukrainian area. However, the current status of these is unknown. This brigade was absolutely rogered rigid by Ukraine in 2022. In December 2022, they were visually confirmed to have lost 40% of its vehicles. These were responsible for the Russian failed counter-offensive during Ukraine's own counter-offensive in Kharkiv last year. In July this year, it was reported that these would merge with the 80th Arctic Motor Rifle Brigade, but I don't think that merger has gone through just yet. Now, unconfirmed at this time is the status of Admiral Viktor Sokolov. He is the commander of the Black Sea Fleet. Rumours are circling on Telegram that he was killed in the missile strike, and one of the missiles was said to have hit his cabinet office, but Ukraine has not confirmed this yet. He is basically the biggest cheese of the Black Sea Fleet, being its commander. He assumed the role in August 2022. His notable achievements during his tenure include seeing a Rapua class ship getting holed by a marine drone, an oil tanker holed by a marine drone, the Crimean Bridge getting blown up, the Crimean Bridge getting blown up again, a Rapua class ship getting hit by a storm shadow, a Kilo class submarine getting hit by a storm shadow, Two S-400 launchers defending Crimea, getting hit by Neptune. An amphibious raid on Crimea by Ukraine which destroyed a radar system. Ukraine recapturing the Boyka Royal Towers. A Black Sea Fleet communications centre 
getting hit by Storm Shadow, and now Storm Shadow destroying his own HQ. So, illustrious stuff here. Given the number of ships he's lost, he seems to have taken naval advice from Uncle Albert. It might have been better for Ukraine if he stuck around, since he's losing a naval war to a nation without a navy. In total, there are at least 9 dead and 16 injured confirmed so far by Ukraine. And of course that number could easily rise, and I expect there may well be more high ranking officers included in that number in the total tally. Finally, after the strike yesterday, there was a photo of thick smoke around some of the ships at Sevastopol. This has since been confirmed to be just smoke screens. And as a side note, these will be pretty useless against GPS guided missiles such as Storm Shadow. Storm Shadow does use a pop up target recognition mode as well as the GPS, where it scans for the target first, but that uses infrared, and I don't think a smoke screen would prevent that either. So that's it for this video. Now, before we finish, I'm going to play a message from Andre West about the ongoing fundraiser. Thanks to everybody who has donated so far, I appreciate it a lot. Take care, everybody. Dear viewers, my name is Andre West. I'm a volunteer in eastern Ukraine, and I've been here for one and a half years continuously. As a team, we evacuated several hundred people then brought humanitarian aid to those places where people don't get any. Now, since this year, we are strongly supporting the military with medical supplies, generators, and how we are fixing roads with this material called asphalt. All we have to do is to open a bag, to dump it in the hole, and to drive over it to make it smooth. It stays in the ground for several months. Tanks do not damage it any more than regular roads. We are doing this to ease casualty transportation near the front line. But we are also helping to get the supplies quick and safer into the areas where they are needed. We need about 2,500 euros to lay about 25 tons of cold asphalt every month. This is a lot of material and we can do quite a lot with it. I can't say how many kilometers because it always depends on the road. We are also working on a solution to allow ACES into the towns and villages on the front line when the rain starts and it becomes muddy. Some places are completely cut off from diesel ammunition and they can barely get casualties out. We are going to put cement into the mud to make a new road where there is none. Please help us to finance this project. Thank you very much. Our website is in the description and I will try to add the comments under every video so you can add a reply, any question and I will answer it myself. Thank you very much.